tiny house, prepper. Live simple, live free. Well, hey everybody, I'm Bill with Tiny House Prepper, and I need to do some more work to my wood stove. Um, <clears throat> for those of you who have not seen this before, it's probably been about a year and a half since I've done any videos about my wood stove, so I know that I, since then I've gotten thousands of new subscribers who may not have seen it. So let me tell you a little bit about it before I tell you what I'm going to be doing to it. No, this is not an optical illusion. This is really this small tiny little wood stove. It's called a cubic mini wood stove and they have two different uh, sizes. The cub, which is the small one, and the grizzly, which is the large one. This is the grizzly. This is the larger one. We first started with, this, with the cub, which is even smaller than this. This does a fabulous job. It heats our entire house, our entire RV travel trailer here, up to a livable temperature and I, we heated the entire house with about one half cord of wood for the entire winter. If we had a full size house and we tried to use wood all the time we'd probably go through three or four cords or more. So this has really been fabulous. <clears throat> it's so tiny because we can't fit anything larger in this trailer because anything larger you need several feet of, of space around it uh, because of fire danger. Uh, you have to have a certain amount of clearances and we just can't get We'd end up with the, with the stove right in the middle of the living room and know where to move around it. So when we found this, it was a real godsend. We absolutely love it. If you haven't seen any of the previous videos, I will put a, uh, a link up here for you so that you can, uh, you can see them. Uh, now, I even have videos on there about how to process the wood because I have to process, take firewood and process it down into this size, which is, it can't take any more than five and three quarter inches. So I have a whole wood processing section about how I do that as well in these videos. Now, let me tell you what was going on with this. Like I said, this is a fabulous little stove that completely heats our house and it does a very good job. But it does have one problem in that it's so small and the fire chamber and the amount of fuel that you can put in here, the amount of wood that you can put in here to burn means that it can't get up to a temperature that's sufficient to burn all the uh, all the creosote out of it. So even though it heats, it's hot enough to heat the house and then some, it's not hot enough to burn out the creosote. Let me show you what I'm talking about with this little gauge right here. Now I have this little thermometer here on the flue so I can know what the temperature is. And notice that the yellow section, which starts at about <clears throat> just under 300 degrees up through 500 degrees is the optimal temperature for creosote control. Anything above that and you're in danger of a uh, flu fire. Anything below that is just simply not hot enough to be able to burn up the creosote. Well this fire place uh, burns anywhere between 250 and 300 degrees Fahrenheit when I stoke it up and it's going as hot as I can get it, it's right at 300 degrees. Then as it starts to cool down, it drops to, down to 275 uh, or so. And that's just not enough to build up or to burn out the creosote. So what that means is that I have a constant creosote problem, build up problem here where I have to clean out the flu about once a month in order to keep it safe and in order to keep it burning. I didn't know that at first and it went like two months, two and a half months, and all of a sudden every time I opened the door smoke came out the front. It wasn't drawing anymore. And I took it all apart and discovered that out of that three inch flue there was only a hole, a tiny little hole in the center that was still open. So I have to get in there and clean it out about once a month. Now several things here. Uh, when I first bought this, the flue pipe that they had on their website, because this is, this is a three inch flue and three inch is hard to find, but they did have it on their website. So the the flue that I bought was single wall, which means that as the, even though it's not warm enough here, it might be 300 degrees, by the time it get, gets up to the roof and where it goes out the roof, it's lost a lot of heat out of the single wall flue. Um, and so that was a problem. So since then they've got double wall and this is now double wall flue, which helps a little bit 
to keep the gases hotter as it goes out the chimney and it helps a little bit with, uh, with the buildup. Um, another issue was that the first time I took this out or to clean it, okay, there, there's a double burn chamber up in here, which I knew. And I was afraid, I, I have to clean it from the roof and I run a cleaning brush down through there. I was afraid to do that because all of that creosote and soot and everything would fall down into the chamber here and clog up and I didn't know what I was going to do about that. So I actually ended up taking the whole stove off of the wall to clean it out and then put it back again. And I thought, oh, I can't possibly do this every, you know, every month. So that's why I came up with this. I put this in here with the T and this way I have a clean out right here. And then I just take the cap off the bottom, run it down through there, and it cleans it out. The creosote runs down into a bucket, and it doesn't get into the, uh, the stove. And that actually works much better to clean out the flue, because it, it just goes very fast. I can do it in 15 minutes. After I did that, I discovered something about this stove that I didn't know. The double burn chamber up here has a couple of steel plates that you can just, there's a screw in there on each side and you can just unscrew it and take the plates out and that opens the whole thing up so that when you clean it and the stuff falls through there it's going to fall all the way down here here it's not going to get caught in the double burn chamber now whether it wasn't on the instructions or I just didn't read them because you know I'm a man and who reads instructions <laughs> I didn't know it was there once I discovered that it's there I realized it's very much it's very easy now to clean it out if it was going straight up so this whole thing wasn't necessary. <clears throat> Another issue with this, it, it worked well to clean it out, but it, it, it limited the, the draw. Because as it comes up here, it, it creates turmoil or turbulence here, and it just doesn't draw like it should. If it went straight up, it would draw very, very fast. It would keep the fire burning hotter. I also have problem with smoke coming out the front. As soon as this starts to get clogged at all, and it would draw, draw much faster and I wouldn't have as much smoke coming out the front if this went straight back up again. So, now that I have the double wall pipe, and now that I know that this isn't necessary because I can clean this out, I'm going to replace this with a pipe that goes straight up again. Now I've actually done quite a few videos along the way as I was figuring all this out documenting the problems I was having and what I was trying to fit how I was trying to fix it and all that I think all that just created a lot of confusion so with this fix I'm think I'm going to take down all those other videos because I don't want to create confusion um, also the roof let me show you the ceiling so you can see up here at the ceiling this is the place where the original flue went through and when I put the clean out I had to move it over like that and so I just plugged this I just stuffed insulation in there with the intention of fixing that hole and I just sort of never got around to it it's just cosmetic you know but Elizabeth would say about once a month she would say are you ever going to fix that hole yes dear I'll get to it eventually <laughs> well I think it's been over two years since I did this and left that hole and I still haven't fixed it <laughs> which is a t typical for a contractor. They never fix their own home because they're doing it, you know, the work out outside the home. They come home, they don't want to do it anymore. And I was a contractor for, for several decades. So anyway, now I'm glad I didn't fix that hole because since everything is still there, all I have to do is take the insulation out. I had screwed a metal piece down on top and caulked it around because it's a flat metal roof uh, to seal it. So all I have to do is take that metal piece up Take the insulation out and the new pipe will go right up through there. It'll make the whole thing much faster, much easier to do. And here's another thing that I'm going to be able to fix. This is double wall pipe, double wall flue like I said. And it goes up into a roof flange that goes through the roof in a waterproof way for a flat roof. The problem is the roof flange that I had is single wall. So right up inside here I have an adapter that goes from the double wall to the single wall. But then that means that after it goes through the roof, I have about a foot of it sticking out above the roof and that's all single wall. And that's out in the cold. So I have single wall pipe going through the cold where if the gases don't stay hot enough, the gases turn to liquid, stick to the insides of the flue and then get the buildup. And every time I had to clean out this flue, 90% of my problem was from about here up where it was getting into the cold 
and it was uh, you know clogging up the pipe the roof flange that I have here was the only one that cubic mini wood stove had at the time when I first bought this stove they were just a new company and still trying to get up and running now they've got a lot more stuff now they have a roof flange that I will be able to run double wall all the way up through it and I'm very happy with that because then if I have a foot or more sticking up above in the cold it's double wall flu so it will help keep the gases hotter once again and I won't have as meant as much issue with creosote up there at least that's the theory Okay, so I got this ceiling flange off. I also wanted to mention this because last time I did a video and showed the ceiling here and didn't mention that, I got comments about it that you get, you got roof damage there, buddy. You need to take care of that roof leak or you're going to have serious issues. Yep, you're right. I did take care of it. I got a uh, RV armor roof coating on there about a year and a half ago, which is has a lifetime guarantee and has completely fixed the roof, the leak. So all of this is completely dried out. I have not fixed this. All that needs is just scrape and be repainted. I have not fixed that or put the molding around the door because I also have plans to fur out this wall with two by twos and put another two inches of insulation in there. I've already done it to every other wall in the house except for this one right here. So I don't want to waste my time sanding and painting that when I'm just going to be covering it all over with additional insulation. Then I'll finish up the, the door and put trim on it as well. Okay, so I just took this pipe off, and I don't know if you can see down there, but there is some creosote, but it's mostly clear. But right here is a great big gob of creosote that is built up right where it goes through the roof. That's where it turns from double wall into single wall. Let me show you that, a close-up of that. Can you see that big huge thing of creosote right there? It's blocking about half of more than half of it only this is only the part that's open and all this is clogged up that right there is where it turns into the single wall so that's what I've been dealing with no wonder it doesn't draw properly if I don't clean it every couple of weeks hopefully I'm going to be able to eliminate a lot of that now here I am up on the roof and here's the uh, current flu where it comes through notice the creosote on the roof at the bottom of the flue here that's because, like I was saying before, the, the gases weren't hot enough to burn up the creosote and so the creosote would condense into liquid and run down the inside of the flue. But it would also come out the top and, and the liquid would run down the outside of the flue and all over the roof. This is not a good situation, obviously. So I'm hoping that once I replace it with a double wall, it'll keep the gases hotter and it'll burn the creosote up and I won't have this problem on the inside or on the outside of the flue. And I don't know if you can see it, but right down here is the original place where the original flu came through. Now, we have paid a lot of money, several thousands of dollars, to put this surface on this roof with RV Armor. It's a great surface. It has a lifetime guarantee if there's ever a problem, they're going to come out and fix it. Um, so for that reason, because you see how the, their coating comes right up onto here, I don't want to take this off. I don't want to mess up this coating. If I took this off, then I would have to put in a piece of metal in there, try to cover it with something, and it's not going to be the RV armor. So I'm just going to leave this in place. I'm going to uh, cut this out over here 
and then that's just where I put a circle of metal and screwed it down so hopefully I should just be able to unscrew it and reuse the original hole that I had and I think there's enough room here to fit the new flange in and leave this in place and then I'll just take this off cover it over with a cap that I have to make that waterproof as well so let's see how this goes RV armor is pretty amazing. It's a pretty thick total rubber coating. Pretty cool stuff. Soft and pliable. Now I can just unscrew this and take the original patch off that I had used to, uh, to patch this originally. Well that was easy enough, since I already did the most of the work last time, now I'm ready to run the pipe up through it. Now this original roof flange here that I used worked well. The problem with it was that this is single wall pipe and there was no way to change it. I got this originally from the Cubic Mini Wood Stove website when I purchased the stove. And this is the only one they had at the time. Now they've got this. I also got this from their website. This is rubber. And this rubber is rated to about, I think, 400 degrees. And you can cut it depending on the size of the pipe. The smallest that it'll do is three inch, which is what I've got. So I don't have to cut it at all. And that's pretty cool. You can do this flat. You can do it up to an angle of 45 degrees for a sloped roof. If you have a corrugated metal roof, this actually bends so you can make it fit. So I'm going to be putting this right over here and notice that it goes over top of this a little bit. And I, like I said, I don't want to move that, but it'll be caulked all around and then it'll be screwed down tight and I'll be able to screw it, caulk it and screw it and bend it to fit that and it shouldn't be any problem at all. It'll just go right like that. Then I'll be taking this off and capping that one and the new one will be up higher. At least that's the plan. <laughs> okay. Now the screws, I needed to get these screws with the metal washer and then the rubber gasket underneath of it to seal, to, to screw down into here so it'll seal. I wanted to get self-tapping sheet metal screws with this rubber gasket on it but I couldn't find any that were anything less than three inches. <laughs> they only had three inch and four inch uh, self-tapping metal screws which I don't understand that at all. So this is actually a wood screw with a tip on it so I'm going to have to drill. It'll still hold in the metal. I'm going to have to drill holes all the way around to screw these in since it's not self-tapping. That's unfortunate. If I had used the three inch, that is like almost sticking out of my ceiling down underneath. Yeah, I would have just gone under, gone through the ceiling because I got three inches of insulation in here. 
Now here's from inside with the rubber roof flange up above and this is all just insulation right in here and the double wall pipe goes through there but in order to make it a little bit more fireproof what I did last time was I, cut, I bought a piece of 5 inch flue pipe and I cut this little piece that I can then put in here and essentially what that does is it takes the 3 inch flue, I mean the double wall flue turns it into a triple wall as the pipe goes up through there that helps to protect the insulation from the heat a little bit better and it worked before with just the single wall pipe so now that I got double wall pipe it should be even better now here's the new flue pipe and you can see the double wall in there the gap leaves a little bit of insulation hopefully that'll keep the gases inside a little hotter so I won't have as many uh, creosote issues And here's a ceiling flange it goes up there to cover the hole and it's vented these holes to let some of the heat out put that up there alright so I got the metal ring around here got that up through the center I want to make sure that it's in the center of the hole so I'm going to use this to hold it there in the center All right. that keeps it in place go ahead and put the rest of the screws in Okay, so I had the flue all together, and then I realized I had forgotten to move this heat shield. This is a heat shield that goes against the wall right behind the flue. <laughs> so I had to take the whole flue apart and uh, in order to get this off. I could get this off, but I, the flue was in the way to be able to remount it over here. So as I was laying this out, I realized that if I turned it a little bit, it wouldn't run up as, as far on this flange over here, and I think it'll work much better. This is silicone. 100% silicone. Oh, crud. put the caulk on the wrong tracing <laughs> now I got a lot of extra caulk and a mess here It'll do the job, it just doesn't look as good.
this cap was on the bottom of my clean out down inside and now I'm going to reuse it up here. So now you can see I have the old one capped off. This is what's left of the old single wall. This one is now double wall and it's higher than that. And uh, so it goes, it's double wall pipe all the way up to the, to the top up here. Hopefully that will do better with controlling the creosote. Okay, so up until now, everything you've seen on this video, I did in the middle of the summer. July, I think it was, a number of months ago. You know, I want, didn't want to be doing all that work up there on the roof in the cold, so I got it done over the summer. But I couldn't really test it until it got cold outside, otherwise we'd blast ourselves out of here. So it's now the first week of December, and we have been using this uh, for several weeks now, three weeks or something like that. And I gotta tell you, it's absolutely a world of difference. It's just, it's like a different stove. Hi. <laughs> it's like a different stove completely. Um, <clears throat> it is so much hotter. It's burning so much hotter. It's putting out so much more heat. And when you open the door, smoke doesn't come out. Used to be I'd open it and smoke would come out. It doesn't happen anymore. So you can see the fan, the eco fan working here. You can see the thermometer right here. And notice that it's much hotter than it used to be. It used to burn right at the bottom of the yellow right there at about 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Now it's up around 450 and it's really doing a job of burning out the creosote now. Now I know that the thermometer is here and it used to be up on the flue. So it's, it's naturally, it's going to be hotter down here. So it's kind of comparing apples and oranges, but still, I think that's considerably hotter than it would have been before. I can't put that up on the flue because it sticks with a magnet and the flue used to be steel and it stuck to it. The flue is now stainless steel and a magnet doesn't stick to the flue. So I put it here, but you can see how much hotter it is burning. So let's like take a look. Let me recap what happened here. When I first bought the stove, uh, I got a cat hair in my nose. <laughs> when, I when I first bought the stove, the company was brand new and this three inch flue pipe is really hard to find locally. Nobody makes it. So I bought the flue pipe from Cubic Mini Wood Stove. Like I said, they were brand new and the only uh, flue pipe that they had was single wall. They didn't have double wall pipe. The single wall just didn't keep the gases and the, uh, going up the flue hot enough, and so it condensed on the side and then turned into a real serious creosote problem. So then I did that, that um, bend in the thing so I could clean it out better, made it so much easier to, to clean out, but the turbulence that was created by that elbow in the flue meant that it didn't draw properly, <clears throat> which meant that it, was, it burned even cooler, which meant there was even more of a uh, creosote buildup. So the fixes that I tried to do made it easier to clean out, but it didn't fix it at all. Then they finally came out with the double wall flue pipe, which I, I have here. And so I eliminated the, uh, the elbow and put it straight up using double wall. And now we've been using it for, like I said, for about three weeks. And I just climbed up on the roof and looked down in there and as clean as a whistle. I'm very happy. No creosote buildup at all. Normally, about once a month, I would have to clean it out. So after three weeks, you would definitely see some buildup in there. There just was no buildup at all. So now, instead of cleaning it once a month, I figure I can clean it in the, in the fall uh, when the season starts. 
and then maybe once sometime in the middle of the winter we'll just have to see how it goes but this is definitely the way to go double wall pipe straight through the roof no elbows no turns now if you have to turn it to take it out a window or out the wall you know deal with it it'll still work you just have to clean it a lot more but the most efficient way is straight out through the roof so i'm very happy with it now well i mean i've always been happy with how it heats the place but it's going to be much easier now that i don't have to clean out the flue all the time so i hope that is helpful i know many of you have already purchased a, a, a wood stove based on my reviews because you've told me so i i hope that if you're considering buying this that this information will be very helpful for you now cubic mini wood stove has all of the pieces that you need to make this work properly and they didn't when i first bought it because of the single wall flue pipe so okay guys i hope that's helpful thanks for watching live simple live free you guys be blessed see you next time